everyone welcome to my channel tech ltl so my today's topic is ratch random access procedure in lt so uh, let's start the topic ratch so there are the two basic question that comes in mind that why and when ratch so why ratch to achieve the uplink synchronization between the uv and the node b and to obtain the resource for the rrc connection request that is on message 3 so these are the basic reasons that why ratch is required and the next question so when this occasion uh, on what occasion when this ratch should be started or should come in picture so as per 3gpp specs uh, below you can see these are the occasions when it arises so the first thing and the first one is for the initial initial access the ratch procedure is required for the rrc connection re-establishment procedure for the handover and for the dlul data arrival uh, in, a, in rrc connected mode and whenever whenever there will be a tier requirement is there so there are two types of ratch procedures first one is contention based ratch procedure in short, we can call it as a CBRA, and second one is non-contention-based ratch procedure, or we can say contention-free ratch procedure, the CFRA. So now, contention-based ratch procedure, CBRA. So this is basically applicable for all type, all five events that uh, we are going to discuss. So for the synchronization initiated by the UV using the common preamble during any of the following uh, cases like for the initial access radio link loss that is rlf radio link failure handover or for the uplink synchronization loss and collisions are possible that is if up to two groups of a random access preamble for the contention based access so these are the two points basic important points for the contention based and further we will discuss more on this so now non contention based ratch procedure or a contention free ratch procedure cfra this is applicable only to handover and the dl data arrival it will be not applicable for all the five events so that there are two main points like synchronization is initiated by the node b and that is also using the dedicated preamble during the handovers so this is the main uh, point to be marked and up to one group of a reserved random access preamble so these are the two basic points uh, which is uh, for the non contention base so now we'll go for the next point so now here we can see the ratch related parameter which is obtained by the uv by reading the sip2 parameter so basically sip2 contains the ratch related parameters here you can say uh, this i have taken from uh, sip2 logs so you can see uh, the parameters uh, which are present in sip2 like radio resource configuration common ratch config common you can say preamble informations are there number of ra preambles preamble group size of ra preambles message size power ramping RA supervision information, period conflict. So these all are the SIP2 information which is required for uh, RATCH. So I have highlighted the important one and rest are uh, you can see by name itself you can able to understand. So we can see the number of RA preambles. So this is the preambles for the UV to choose from. Okay, so uh, now uh, preamble group A means uh, it has given a specific group there are two groups basically group a and group b so here group a uh, is given size of ra preamble group a so this is the preamble of group a okay and uh, message size of group a will be there message power offset group b is uh, also there now power ramping parameter so power ramping step which is in db that is also uh, one of the important parameter i will discuss uh, later on this so preamble initial received target power okay so this is the power 
used for the first transmission of the RATCH request. So this is the initial power through which the RATCH has been initiated. So now you can go for the next uh, other uh, uh, parameters also. Preamble transmax. So the number of times you would transmit the RATCH preamble after the failure. Suppose the RATCH uh, it got failure and then it start trans uh transmitting so this is the maximum number of try that you we will do so and next one ra response rar window size this will give you the rar window size mic contents and resolution timer will be provided by this max arc retransmit max arc message transmission message three transmission so these are the parameters basically uh important parameters which i have highlighted period config in which uh, we will get the information about the root, uh, root sequence index and the period config index, high speed flag, zero correlation zone config, period frequency offset. So period frequency offset basically is, uh, is a mapping on a resource grid of the six RBs. So basically the six PRBs uh, are required for the uh, when you said that ratch. So that will provide the details we will get the details from pH frequency offset so you can go through all the parameters one by one and you can check yourself i have uh, not given the details for each and every one go to next slide so this is basically the small diagram which i have put uh, to illustrate the RATCH process in a very simple way. So basically the, when the RATCH is started. So suppose the RATCH process is started. So after that uh, it, it didn't reach to the node B. Then this yellow portion is showing the power ramping step. So it will ramp up the power and then initiate the RATCH. So this is message one you can say. and RAR is a, a, a message two, which uh, will be in downlink shared channel, and then there will be the RRC connection request, and then we have the RRC connection setup that is message four. Here only the concern, uh, contents and resolution are finalized, and then we have the RRC connection setup complete message. So this is a small block diagram for the RR, uh, for the RATCH processor. So now we will go uh, one by one uh, messages. So first of all, we, we can uh, go through the one point that we have RATCH preambles, which is having this uh, format, which contains CP and the sequence number. And uh, basically uh, RATCH preambles having the four possible formats. I have provided the table, zero, one, two, three. And these are the uh, details based on that. You can go uh, by your own in uh, this values and below are the few points that comes in a picture that there are total 64 preambles for each cell this is one of the major point that you need to uh, remember and the preambles available are divided into the two groups that is group a and group b and the total six PRVs, which I have already mentioned before, the total six PRVs are used to send the RATCH preamble. So what I have mentioned, like total six PRVs are used to uh, send the RATCH preamble. So these are the requirements for uh, initiating the RATCH uh, process. So now we can see that already I have mentioned uh, like we have a uh, two groups like group a and group b so how the you can say group b preamble uh, uh, means uh, number of preambles in group b will be decided so number of preambles in a group b will be decided based on like total we have a total number of array preambles minus the size of array, array preambles in a group a and uh, here also there is one more one more point which i have not written like PRH sequence are basically the Z of two sequence. Now we will go uh, through a message by message. So here I have summarized in a one diagram. You can see 
the UV and the node B. So you will send the message one, and then a node B will uh, respond with message two. Then again, you will be sending message three, and then you know we will be responding as a message four. And now finally, the uh, you will be sending message five. So this is the simple diagram which I have mentioned without any uh, you can say details. Now we will go through one by one message the full details. So now we'll start with the message one. So message one. So here the UV will uh, randomly select the array preamble. So array preamble will select it, which contain the array RNTI, and uh, this will be transmitted on a period channel. And this uh, array preamble will be uh, containing that uh, CP and the sequence number, which is having the CP and the sequence number. So now here we'll go for for the message two that is RAR random access response. So uh, we can see the informations which will go in a random access response. So the E node we transmit the RAR on the downlink head channel and derives the RAR in TI. And the third point we can see it will calculate the TCI and TI calculate the timing advance and uplink resource grant will be uh, done here hoping flag we can get it from the MCS we will be getting uh, we will be sending uh, in this message too and uh, we will also have the back of indicator MAC header so this this will be started when there will be a message to failure so that will be uh, started here and we can see like this uh, here uh, the sip2 parameters like ra response window size uh, will be used so ra response window size will determine the size of uh, response and here also we will uh, get few more information like which uh, power to be um, means power to be used um, by the UV for the PUSCH and the uplink delay. So these are the information that we will get in message two, which will be uh, will be sending from node B to UV. Now we will go to the message three. Message three is basically you can say RRC connection request. So we can see that uh, in message three, while uh, the UV will save the TCR NTI which it got from the RAR uh, in message 2 and the channel which is used like uplink set channel ULSCH and U does not have the permanent identity till now so it will have the random number as a U identity and the U identity is included in RRC connection request which I have already mentioned this message 3 we all already named as RRC connection request and here the timer T30 timer will be started at this particular point at message 3 and the contention resolution process also will be start here and in message 4 the contention resolution will be done so like in this if uh, like I have not taken the example like uh, from message 1 that uh, like 2 UVs suppose like 2 UVs are trying to camp on start the right process the 2 UV will send the right preamble at the same time and uh, random access uh, RAR uh, will be sent to that both of the UVs then uh, that UV identity uh, in message 3 to message 3 uh, the E node B will not be able to uh, identify that which UV need to be selected in message 4 only uh, E node B will uh, come to know that either UV A, UV B or UV C, which one will be got selected based on the message to TA which uh, actually it will compare the TA which we, uh, which uh, was sent in message 2 on that basis only it will categorize that which UV it need to be get selected so uh, let's go for the, this is the message for uh, information so that you is 
receives RSA connection setup message in message four, which I have already told you. So RSA connection setup message basically consists of CRNTI, which is used for the further communication with the network. From here, we don't have the temporary ID. We'll get this CRNTI. And this, and uh, basically this message four, uh, the channel using is DLSCH. And here on the contention resolution will be finally done. So now the message, this is the whole message again I'm showing. So here the message five that is RRC uh, connection setup complete message will be there. So, and you will send this RRC connection setup message, complete message and the further signaling will go as per the requirement. So these are uh, basically the topics which are in the rise procedure. In addition, you can add your points you can highlight the mistakes because uh, I'm also not the computer. I'm also uh, learning and then preparing all this thing. So uh, whatever the points that you need to be you, that you need that this should be added, please add it and just mention also that what I need to what are the point that need to be subtracted also that I will also subtract that. So please uh, go through this complete video and uh, let me all the, let me know all this thing and for today uh, thanks i will come with a new topic probably uh, the next topic uh, would be uh, the initial attach so thanks for today keep learning keep sharing thanks